In this video, we tackleize, tackleize the low voltage wiring for the safety box. But first, have you seen the new PB Blaster with the bendy straw? I swear, we're just spoiled here in the States. So we need to give some intelligence to the safety box. And I have a prior video where I go over at nauseum how to thin out the wiring harness, how to extend it. This is a stock wiring harness that I just took the loom off of. And wow, it just got nicely twisted. I'll just briefly go over, if I can plug it in, the wires here. So there are five wires on here, and two red ones are for power for 12 volts. Sorry about the tangling. This, is, this was just perfect a second ago. Why does it smell like PB Blaster in here? Yeah, it was all perfect, and now, now it's tangled. I don't understand. Why? So the red gets 12 volts. That gets connected to our bus bar here. And the only thing I don't really have set up in this tabletop setup here is that that the safety box will be turned on when I turn on the ignition in the car but here it's going to turn on right when we turn on the bench power supply aka provide permanent power to our VCU which for testing always we go topless but you get the idea that's not the point of this test um, I could rig something up, but again, not, not focused on that. What is happening? There's a black wire, which is negative, okay? So the two reds run together to the 12 volt, low voltage uh, bus bar, and the black wire runs to the negative bus bar over here. There is a video about this, how I think how I do it in detail, but basically electronic component needs power, it gets 12 volts. Some things like the throttle get 5 volts, but this guy get, can handle 12. And then that takes care of three of the five wires, and then we have these two wires, a yellow and a purple, and they're twisted. And Double check the colors on your safety box if you decide to go with a BMW one. Uh, there's some other safety boxes that don't have can or may have different wiring. And they go above the permanent power to the VCU. It's how I remember generally where they go. So above pin 55, above pin 56. So those are pins 27 and 28. So I... You can just look this up. It's not like you're going to be wiring this every day or every weekend like I'm doing. So just set it and forget it. But 27 is lower than 28. So that's the low signal. So that's the purple wire. And then 28 is high. So when I'm talking about low and high, that's CAN bus uh, signal, low signal and high signal or channel, whatever it is, high and low. Okay, so that, that's on there, and that's pretty much it as far as controlling the safety box. We are not connecting any low voltage to this ba battery module. We would not be connecting anything to the battery pack if we had more than one module here. However, there is a BMS connector, which is outside of the scope. I even removed the module, so we're not confusing anybody. So to provide electricity from the module to the inverter, we control the safety box. That's the whole point. 
All right, so before we go firing everything up, I just want to level set and point out a parameter that we need to be really cautious of, and that is UDCSW under contactor control. Because if you were testing without a high voltage battery and you just wanted to send the zombie through its paces of, and put it in run mode and so on, then you would set the UDC, which is battery voltage, um, switch whatever to zero meaning that the system is not going to look for a certain level of pre-charge okay so usually when you get the zombie I think that setting is at something like 300 that's the default setting and that is sort of a safety thing to prevent a lot of uh, current flowing immediately into the inverter if you were to hook everything up and not really test first. So if again, if you want your zombie to work without a high voltage battery or a simulation of a high voltage battery, you just set that setting to zero and then you can take the zombie through its paces, if you will. So what I'm going to do is just give permanent power to the zombie make sure my ignition switch is off i'm not going to press the uh, start or run button i'm not going to do any of that i'm going to put the laptop on here and we're going to take a look at that setting all right but first what we do is we take our bench power supply which is simulating a car battery always turn it on first notice my positive lead to it is disconnected i want to make sure the voltage is preset at 13 volts. I hope you can see that. And then I also kind of turn down the current um, a bit so I don't have it on full blast. Okay, but I'm not limiting the current. I just kind of twist the knob so they're not on a max. Okay, so turn that off. And then we're going to connect the lead and this this red lead just provides positive to our bus bar and there's a negative one does the same so that's what the bus bar looks like it just makes it easier than putting every single ring terminal on these studs which are short and they can get stripped and cross-threaded Okay, so at this point, we will take out the laptop. Okay, I'm going to fire that up. You guys can see some lights flickering. There's a solid light, and there's a flickering light. When the, the light that's flickering on the green board, not the little blue card, but on the green board, that's telling us that the microcontroller is microcontrolling something. Something's happening, so that's a good thing. Okay, so first thing, with permanent power going to the VCU, the Wi-Fi card advertises its network. So we go look under our network connections and we have Ferrylink. I have it set up to auto connect, so we're good. And then we fire up a browser and that should put us on the Hubner open inverter interface. And I'm gonna go to parameters. And under parameters, we scroll down a bit. Contactor control. See what I'm saying? The I think the default value here is 330. Let's take a look at the column heading just to remind ourselves how this interface works. So here's a our column header. Last column is default setting. So the default would have been 330. I think I misspoke at 300 earlier. And Ours, see here, it's set to zero. That is not good. We want to set this to, that's approximately a 60 volt uh, module. So I'm just going to set it to like 50 volt. See what happens with that. So we put in a value and we're instructed to hit enter. Okay, so I hit enter. I'm going to jump to commands, save parameters to flash. And I'm going to jump to parameters and it says here that they were stored. So I'm happy with that. Now, another thing for us to check, and this is all review for us, is we want to go to something called ISA. 
control. Isa shunt control. And I think Damien mentioned that he may change that name to just be more generic. ISA shunt um, control, a little bit of a misnomer. I should probably take the ISA out of it and just have shunt control in here. Because Isa is one of three now offered, I think. So we do want that, that ISA in it, initialization or something like that. And the type, so there's ISA, which is the German black little device, current shunt, which is a Bellenhut or something like that. There's the S-Box, which is BMW. And then there's this one, that's the Volkswagen one. Okay, so we have a choice of three. This was already set, but in case you messed with your zombie or I checked this thing because maybe I turned it off. So that is that is fine. I think those are the settings that we need. And at this point, let's jump over to spot values and see what we have here. So, oh, this is cool already. So I'm glad I looked. So over here we have this UDC, UDC2, and UDC3. So these correspond to UDC means voltage reading, and we can have three different voltage readings, readings, DC voltage here, and these correspond to the sensors on the current shunt, the ISA, the, the German device, that when we first started out, that was like the only way to measure current, and it also happened to measure voltage. Now we have the S-Box, we have the Volkswagen box, so we have some options. I want to point this out that this is great because we can see the voltage of the inside of the safety box, which is essentially the inside voltage of our battery pack is already provided to us by the safety box here. Okay. So UDC2 is the inside voltage. Nothing's coming out, but we have it. We can see that it's 58. So this is a parameter or a spot value that you can use to set your UDC SW. If that said, say 30 volts, and you preset your UDC SW to higher than that, the precharge is never going to complete. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And then, you know, op mode is off. Let's take a peek at a couple other ones over here. Okay, so T15 stat and inverter status. So these right here are off because we haven't gone that far. Well, let's go for broke. Let's uh, turn on our ignition first here with the switch and see what happens. As always, I forgot auto refresh. Thank you very much. Okay, so the ignition on turns on the P15 stat. That's a, I think that's a either European or a German standard this T15 thing it was a bit foreign to me at first as an American. Anywho, uh, so that's now on. Okay, great. So now I'm going to click the start button and we'll see what happens next. And now the inverter status is on. And now we're going to go to the top of the page. And now we can see that our um, op mode is run. Our inside voltage is 58 and our outside voltage this is the voltage coming out of the safety box is close to that it's 57 whatever and so there we have it we just connected pretty much the whole enchilada we don't have a throttle pedal we don't have the uh, forward reverse switch but it doesn't matter we are controlling the safety box opening closing the contactors to allow high voltage into the inverter and we can see it inside the battery pack and then we can see it at the coming out of the, the box.